Hello everyone, this is Robert, and I don't need two fiber lasers. I currently have a CloudRay QS50 as well as an Xtool F1 Ultra. In this video, I'm going to kind of go over the pros and cons of each one, and ultimately choose the one that I am going to keep in my shop. So, this should be kind of fun. Okay, so I've got three main purposes for making this video. The first of which is to compare something like a cloud ray, kind of a more industrial style laser, to something like the X-Tool F1 Ultra, which is kind of more geared towards hobbyists. I think that's a really good comparison, even though on paper they're fairly similar, in practice using them is a little bit different. The second purpose is I really had a hard time deciding which one of these I was going to keep because there's a lot of kind of pros and cons and non-overlapping benefits to each one of them. So this was kind of more of an exercise for me to kind of get these thoughts out on video so that I could decide which one of these I'm going to keep because they're kind of oddly equal for different reasons. The third reason for making this video is very selfish and shameless is I have affiliate links for both of these, so those are down below if you end up deciding to buy one of those. Well, I've got affiliate links down below for that. Of course, you don't have to use them. But I feel like this video will be helpful for anyone that is looking between either one of these or just getting an idea between the two different styles, the hobbyist and the industrial. So I'm not going to cover all the specs and features on both of these but I'll cover kind of the details. So on the cloud ray, this is a 50 watt Q-switched Rakus fiber module. And inside the X-Tool is that same thing, but only in a 20 watt. So they're roughly equivalent. We have a 50 watt over here and a 20 watt over here. However, on the F1 Ultra, in addition to that 20 watt fiber, it also has a 20 watt diode laser. And this can be beneficial for some people if you're doing a lot of different materials. You will be limited to only the materials that can be affected with a fiber laser on the cloud ray, so only metals, some stones, things like that. Whereas with the X-Tool, because it also has the blue diode laser, you can do things like wood. If you put wood into the cloud ray, absolutely nothing happens. I've tried nothing happens. Um, so you have the added benefit on the X-Tool of having both lasers that you can switch back and forth, but on the X-Tool you only have a 20 watt and a 20 watt, and on the CloudRay you have a 50 watt. In addition to the actual power output, you also have kind of the work area. On the CloudRay that is 200 by 200, and surprisingly, on the X-Tool, it's 220 by 220. So this actually has a larger work area than the cloud ray. But this is a little bit deceiving because you can swap out the lenses very easily on the cloud ray and remap to a larger or a smaller work area just by getting different size F-theta lenses. And these guys are maybe about 80 bucks, 100 bucks, something like that. You can just unscrew, install a new one. The reason you might want to do this is the smaller area you can focus that laser down to, the more fine detail you get. So if you're only working on tiny little coins, let's say, you might actually want to swap out the lens for something with a much smaller area so that you can get more fine detail. This is something that you can't do on the X-Tool, and generally speaking, you could get finer resolution and kind of higher detail off of the cloud ray because of that. So now that we have all that out of the way, let's talk about my first consideration, which is size. As you can see, there is a significant difference in size between these two machines. The cloud ray is dramatically bigger, especially when you consider that this has a 200 by 200 effective area and this is 220 by 220. So you can technically engrave larger objects in the X-Tool. In addition to that, the cloud ray also has an additional power supply in the laser source and controller, which is actually sitting down here. So what you're seeing is only yeah, maybe half of the machine. There's a whole separate box down here that in and of itself is about the same size as the X-Tool. So it is a large machine. 
However, there are some pros and cons to this. With the X tool, it does have a larger work area, but you're kind of sort of limited to what you can fit into this bed. This can be raised up, that's not the problem, but if you have something large like this, you can't necessarily just fit it under here and work in the middle of it. You can always have this little back piece to contend with. They do have the conveyor belt, so you can extend that left and right. I've never really used it. I don't have a use for like long skinny things. However, with the cloud ray, this entire enclosure very easily comes off. The head can kind of cantilever out and the overall configuration of this machine makes it much easier to use for non-standard or larger objects. So if you have something really big and you need to kind of finagle it in there and mark on it, the cloud ray is going to do that better. So for this category, the X tool definitely gets a point for just the convenience and the size of it. The fact that you can just plop this down on the workbench and it won't take up that much space is wonderful. With the cloud ray, you're going to have to dedicate a fair amount of room for it. This stand is 24 by, I think, 48, 36, something like that, 24 inches deep, and it comes almost all the way to the front, and I can't push this stand all the way up against the wall because of the fiber laser that comes out the back of it and the exhaust. It takes up a lot of room. This is not something that you're just going to have on the corner of your workbench. So point to X tool for the compactness, but a point to the cloud array for the overall flexibility. This will probably do more things, but the X tool is just a lot more space efficient. So it's about a tie. So now we're going to talk about the big elephant in the room, and that is power. As I mentioned earlier, the cloud ray is a 50 watt fiber laser, whereas the X tool is a 20 watt fiber laser, but with a 20 watt blue diode laser. For me, this really isn't that important. I have a CO2 laser um, sitting over there, an X tool P2, and that is a 50 watt, 55 watt CO2. A CO2 laser can do everything and more that a blue diode laser can do. The limitations with a blue diode laser is you're not going to be able to do clear acrylic and a couple other things. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but the CO2 can do all of those things in addition to everything that a blue diode laser can do. So although it is convenient to have all of this in one machine for me, um, if I didn't have a CO2 laser, that would be an added benefit. But because I already have a CO2, a CO2 and a fiber, you can do pretty much everything in terms of engraving and marking when you have both of those together. So where does the extra, you know, two and a half times power benefit you? Well, it benefits you in time. This will do pretty much the same thing, but it will do it a lot slower. It doesn't have as much power, so you don't get as much penetration. It doesn't mark as hard, if that makes sense. It just doesn't have as much power. So you'd have to go slower with the X tool to get the same results that you would with the cloud ray. Now, traditionally with something like a CO2 laser, a difference between a 20 watt and a 60 watt, the 60 watt's gonna be able to cut a lot deeper, it's gonna cut a lot thicker, but neither of these are well suited for cutting application because they use the Galvo head, and that means that the fiber source, the laser source, is at one fixed point in the middle, so in the middle it's gonna be X thickness, and when you go out to the edges, that is a thicker distance because it's at an angle, and that creates a mitered cut. So these are really not well suited for cutting. You can cut very thin stuff like sub one millimeter thick, and it can kind of get it done, and this will cut that stuff faster. But generally speaking, it's gonna be kind of a bit of a bevel. It doesn't leave a great edge. These really aren't well suited for cutting. So the extra power that the cloud ray provides you really doesn't give you extra cutting performance. You would just maybe do a couple more passes on the X tool. So that extra power is just time savings. If you're doing a lot of those like deep engraved coins, you know, like brass coins, if you do something like that, the cloud ray will do it a lot quicker than the X tool can do. But for me out here in the shop as a hobbyist, I'm not running production. It doesn't really matter that much to me. So for this category, it's a bit of a wash. Although this does actually have more power, I don't really have the opportunity to use it because the time savings isn't something that is really all that important to me. And having that extra blue diode laser will probably come in useful at some point. 
I don't know, they each get like a quarter of a point because each of those things is mildly useful to me. But you might be very different. The extra blue laser might come in really handy, or if you're doing a ton of coins or production work where time is money, then the cloud ray is going to be better. So let's talk about build quality and fit and finish. Even though this isn't one of my categories for my determination, I definitely think it's worth talking about because they are very different in their approach. The Cloud Ray is definitely much more of an industrial or business machine. This is the exact model that I purchased for my business, and we have a couple production techs that are using this machine several times a week running production builds on it. The X tool is much more of a prosumer, hobbyist, enthusiast level machine, and it kind of has the build quality to match that. It has a lot more features, the fit and finish is a lot tighter, has like the little LCD screen, the light up display. It just kind of is a cooler machine overall. However, if I was purchasing a machine like this for an industrial environment, I would be concerned about the touch screen over time. I'd be concerned with this being lifted, raised, and lowered several hundred times a day by a production tech that, you know, might not care about the longevity of the machine. Something like the Cloud Ray is just a nice, big, heavy, loud industrial machine, and it fits more in that type of environment. In addition to that, the serviceability of the Cloud Ray is much more straightforward. Most of this machine is fairly modular to where you can swap out the lens, you can swap out the galvo head, the whole arm that the laser sits on is something that you can replace. You can buy all the pieces and kind of rebuild this machine. I've also been inside both of these things and opened them up and the Cloud Ray's controller is much more user-friendly if you're going to be servicing it. All of the individual power supplies are clearly laid out, everything's labeled. This is an easy to work on machine. You're probably not going to be working on the X tool. Everything is bespoke and proprietary and you would just contact their service department and have them deal with it. But in a business environment, you might need to just replace a power supply and get back up and running. So the Cloud Ray is really better for that. I'm not really giving any points to either one of these. I think this is better suited for a hobbyist shop like mine, but the Cloud Ray is much better suited for a production or industrial environment. It just depends on how you're going to be using them. So at this point in the video, we're basically tied between these two machines and I'm still very much confused as to which one to keep, but there is one major category that swings it for me and that is convenience. The X-Tool has a lot of convenience features that make it a lot easier to use for my application. Once again, we have a Cloud Ray at work and we use it every week at least, several days every week, and it's perfectly convenient. We just load up the job, hit the button, and it goes and it does the thing. However, in my workshop and a hobby environment, I'm doing a lot more one-off stuff, so there's a lot more time spent with the setup and um, using the actual software and getting settings and things like that. And the X tool is just a lot easier for that. It has a camera, the Cloud Ray does not. It has Wi Fi connection, the Cloud Ray does not. The Cloud Ray has your typical EasyCAD or Lightburn software, which has every feature you could possibly ever want but it has a lot of features. So it is kind of cumbersome sometimes to set up a job and click through everything. It's really not the most fun software to use. You know, it's something you gotta be a little bit more knowledgeable about. Whereas the X tool is greatly simplified. You don't really have to go through as much calibration steps. You can just load it on a laptop, connect the thing over Wi-Fi, view what's inside with the camera, click a couple buttons. They also have a lot of predefined settings for everything. With the Cloud Ray, you just got to kind of, you know, do a little bit of research online or do some guessing and checking and figure out what the, or the right settings are. With the X tool, you just kind of go into their materials library and that gets you pretty close most of the time. So the convenience factor of the X tool is I think what's kind of pushing me over the edge because it's just easier if I have a 3D printed part that I just want to laser mark something on the front it's just quicker to boot this up, turn on my computer, open it up, do it in the comfort of my home, send the job over, hit it, and I'm done. With the Cloud Ray, I actually have to physically connect a computer to it, load up EasyCAD, and 
when this thing is on, you have the controller running the whole time and it's, you know, noisier, louder, things like that. It's small things, but it took me a long time to kind of figure out which one I actually will use more. And ultimately, I'm going to be using the X tool more because of their software, because it's just more user friendly, and it has those little quality of life features that the Cloud Ray doesn't have. That being said, in a production or industrial environment, those quality of life features really are not necessary. I have never, ever needed to view a webcam feed of this thing when we're running a production run. It just doesn't make any sense. But for the prototyping and hobbyist stuff that I do, those are very, very necessary and wanted features on the X-Tool. So that's why I am giving the point for convenience to the X-Tool and not giving it to the Cloud Ray. For anyone that decided to skip directly to the conclusion of this video, hello and welcome. I've decided to keep the X-Tool F1 Ultra over the Cloud Ray QS50 for many different reasons. The Cloud Ray does have a better, more industrial build quality. It is 50 watts instead of the 20 watts. I think the thing that kind of tipped the scales for me is the overall quality of life features and the convenience of the X tool. Although Lightburn does give you more features and functionality, I find those to be sometimes overwhelming when I'm just trying to do one small aspect of a job. If I was running a production job and trying to tweak everything just right, I think that would be welcome with the Cloud Ray, but with the X tool, it's much more of a walled garden approach where you have more limited options, but everything just kind of works a little bit more simply. So it's that ease of use that I very much appreciate out of the X tool for my home workshop hobbyist type of environment. But I am cheating a little bit because I do have this exact machine at work. So if I do need the flexibility of that kind of larger area to fit stuff onto, or if I need the extra power, I can just go use the one at work. However, I think most people will be perfectly fine with the X-Tool 20 watt, especially considering it has the 20 watt diode in addition to that. I think it's just, there's a lot of pros and cons to consider here, but for me, I like the flexibility. I really, really enjoy having the camera for setting up all the various jobs, and I like the fact that I can turn it on, go inside my office, and just do everything. I'm not directly tethered to the machine for everything. So that's kind of where I stand. I've been back and forth on this, on this decision for several months now. And when I made the first decision, I actually decided on the cloud array and then it just didn't set well. And I kind of went back and I've gone back and forth on this many times. They're both fantastic machines. I do have affiliate links for both of those. If that makes you feel icky, don't use them. That's totally fine. I'm not too concerned about that but I do like both of them and I think they're both great examples of what is offered out there for a more business or industrial machine. And the X-Tool is really great in that more prosumer hobbyist segment. So I think these are both great examples of what's out there. Hopefully this video gave you some good information and maybe makes a purchasing decision a little bit easier for you. If you have any questions, please put them down below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.